Oh, this is Anthony Priscilla meeting with my favorite trigonometry class face to face. And the last time we were working on the unit circle, we defined the six trig functions using the unit circle. We said that the x coordinates are what? Sine or cosine? The x coordinates are cosine, and the y coordinates are sine. And, oh wow, that's supposed to be green. It looks black, doesn't it? On the computer screen, it'll look white green. Light. Okay, huh? Oh, white light. oh, you can't see my writing? Oh, just, just right there. The rest of it's fine. Oh, okay. Oh, you're getting a glare then. Oh, okay, I don't have that glare. My glare is down lower, okay? Yeah. So, uh, let's see. And so I thought we'd real quickly review those points of intersection. This is a circle with radius one. So let's label the four uh, uh, points of intersection that are on the axis, the x-axis and y-axis. Uh, this point right here would be right one up zero. At 90 degrees, what would that point of intersection be? Remember, this is a circle with radius 1, so it would be 0, 1. At 180 degrees, negative 1, comma, 0. And at 270 is 0, negative 1. Now, let's do the 4 angles that have the reference angle of 45 degrees. Those are the four that all end in 5. 45 degrees, 135, 225, and 315. Those I'm picking on because those are the ones that are easy to remember because both the x and y coordinates are square root of 2 over 2. We went through and used the 45, 45, 90 right triangles the last time. And and uh, derive those using the fact that in a 45-45-90 right triangle, the x, the two legs are equal. So now go around the other three quadrants and uh, chain or label those ordered pairs for the other ones that end in five degrees. The ones that would give you a 45-45-90 right triangle. In other words, it's the ones at 45 degrees as the reference angle. The thing that's changing is the signs, S-I-G-N, as you go around. The X coordinate in quadrant two, the X is negative, the Y is positive. In quadrant three at 225 degrees, they're both negative. And at 315 <laughs> degrees, X's are positive, Y's are negative. And those are all the ones that have 45 degrees as a reference angle. Now, what about the four that are closest to the X axis? Those are the ones that have 30 degrees as the reference angle. Well, those have the points one half, the coordinates, or the numbers that you see are going to be 1 over 2 and square root of 3 over 2. So it's a matter of which one is the x value here and which one's the y. Then for 60 degrees, they'll reverse. So I'm doing the four that have 30 degrees as the reference angle. Which distance, if you imagine the 30, 60, 90 right triangle, which one would be longer, the horizontal or the vertical? Which one's longer? The horizontal. Which number's bigger? The square root of 3 or 1? Square root of 3. So square root of 3 over 2, the x value's bigger than the y. That's how I thought about this the first time I ever saw this and had to memorize this many, many, many years ago. I thought, okay, x is uh, longer than y. Square root of 3 over 2 is bigger than uh, 1 half. And that all has to do with the fact that 3 is bigger than 1. So 
So coming over here to 150, negative square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. 210, they're both negative. 330 degrees, x is positive, y is negative. And then you reverse it for the other ones. At 60 degrees, you could sure draw a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, but the horizontal is the small number, the vertical is the larger. And we reviewed a little bit about 30, 60, 90 right triangles last week. And that's how we came up with these numbers. And quadrant. So I'm just sort of redoing everything we did on Wednesday, labeling the unit circle. Now I'm at 240. They're both negative. And at 300, x is positive, y is negative. And the significant thing is this is a nice, easy way if someone says, what's the cosine of 225 degrees? Okay, it's the x-coordinate here at 225 degrees. Okay. Uh, what we're going to do now is fill in the rest of the spaces there. And those little blanks there, that's where we're going to put the radian measurements. I've already mentioned this semester that there are two ways of measuring angles. The degree method, which has been around for thousands of years, when the world, the Babylonians thought that it took 360 days for the earth to go around the sun. They knew the earth was moving around the sun, but they were five days off, and so they got a little, their calendar got off. But that's why they decided to break up the circle into 360 units. Those Babylonians also had a base 60 number system. Have you ever studied what they were able to do? That's, you know, what do we have? A base 10. That means there's 10 different digits. And we form all of our numbers from those digits. The Babylonians had 60 digits forming, the 60 symbols forming their numbers. It was just really amazing. But, now, what we're going to use, and I'll formally define uh, radian measures in a moment, but right now the fact, if you go to any calculus student and tell them, uh, you know, what's a radian, define radians, basically they're going to probably say, basically they're going to probably say, there's nothing weak about that or ambiguous, but pi is 180 degrees. Okay. Do y'all remember the formula for, this is another geometry formula I'm about to ask if y'all remember, uh, circumference of a circle, the calculating the distance around, do y'all remember what that, it's not the pi r squared, that was area. There was another formula about circles that you saw, 2 pi r, 2 pi r calculates that distance around here. What's the distance all the way around this unit circle? Keep in mind, we said the radius is 1. What's this distance all the way around? 2 pi. Two pi. So what's the distance halfway around? Pi. You could think of the radian measurement system as measuring this distance around this unit circle. Okay? I'll define it differently. I'll uh, we'll give you another definition later. But for right now, it's just that distance around. One complete revolution around the outer edge, that radian would be, or that distance would be 2 pi. Ooh, I was going to fill that in. Well, these angles I'll just be filling in in black. 2 pi. So that thing that I'm going to use to fill in these radian measures is the fact that pi is 180 degrees. I can go ahead and fill in zero degrees. That's zero radians. You'll notice degrees have a little symbol there. Radians do not. Radians are real numbers. That's a big deal about radians. They're real numbers. Okay? Whereas degrees are not real numbers. 
temperatures. You were going to try to locate 180 degrees on the number line. It wouldn't be between 179 and 181. It'd be over close to 3. Why am I saying close to 3? What's the decimal value approximation for pi? 3.14. Yeah, so this that's a significant thing about radian measures. Why they're so much better in math because they're real numbers. It's not these units that were made up by these Babylonians thousands of years ago. So if pi is 180 degrees, let's go ahead and write that right there, pi. And these little marks I'm filling in. And to document sharing, there's one of these filled out for you, at least for my face-to-face -face class. Now, 90 degrees, well, what would I write here for 90 degrees? Pi Keep over it two. pi over 2. Okay? Pi over 2 is 90 degrees. Why am I thinking that? 180 degrees divided by 2 is 90 degrees. Now, what do I multiply 90 by to get 270? Three. So if I just multiply pi over 2 by 3, 3 times 90 would be 270. So I'm writing 3 pi over 2. And now I'm going to fill in all the little ref the 30 degrees and its reference angles. That's how I'll start with this. I'm going to start with 30 degrees. 180 divided by what would give me 30 degrees? What's 180 degrees divided by 6. So 180 divided by 6 is 30. So I'm writing 30 degrees as pi over 6. And now I'm going to go around and do the four 30 degree reference angle ones. Okay? The four that are closest to the x axis. After this, I'll be saying these are the over six ones. What now? What do I, I'll have 150. How do I, what do I do to 30? To, let me reword all of that. Five. What do I multiply 30 degrees by to get 150 degrees? Five. five. So five pi over six. Okay. So to get the pi over six, I divided. 180 divided by six is 30. I'm going to stop saying the word degrees just so it'll roll off my tongue better. Why do I multiply 30 by to get 150? Well, 5. So 5 pi over 6. Let's do the same thing with 210. Why do I multiply 30 by to get 210? Seven. So 7 pi over 6. And finally, the last one here that has the 30 degrees as a reference angle. The 330 degree. Why do I multiply 30 by to get 330? 11. So 11 pi over 6. Now let's do the 45 degrees. Hmm. I think that for some reason, in my mind, the 45 degree ones are the ones that take the most thought. You may disagree with me dramatically on that. Uh, what do I multiply, or excuse me, what do I divide 180 by to get 45? 180 divided by 4 would give me the 45. Now to get the other three ones, you think multiply. What do I multiply 45 by to get 135? 3. So 3 pi over 4. Why do I multiply 45 by to get 225? So, is it 5? 225 divided by 45 is 5. So 5 pi over 4. Oh, let me lift this up. And finally, what are we up to? 315? Oh, what's 315 divided by 45? 7. So 7 times 45 would give me 315. Sometimes students start looking at this and oh, they notice all these patterns. Like the over 4 ones, 1 pi, 3 pi, 5 pi, 7 pi. Somehow or another you're going to need to be able to label this quickly or else just see it in your head. Okay? 
For test purposes, in my face-to-face -face class, I'll give you one of these to fill out. Okay. Any questions? Y'all caught up with me? Because I think if you don't have any questions, I bet you can finish it up. The 60 degree ones. How do I think it through? I think, okay, 180 divided by what is 60? Three. three. Okay. Now for the other three, I do multiply. What do I multiply 60 by to get 120? Two. two, so two pi over three. Why do I multiply 60 by to get 240? I'm down here at the 240. Four. four. So four pi over three. And there's one left. Which one have I not done though? 300. Why do I multiply 60 by to get 300? Five. Five. Now notice with the uh, radian measures, all the reference angles we can refer to as like the over six angles. There's four of them with the over six. There's four of them with the over four. Those are the ones that end in five degrees. The four that are closest to the y-axis, those are the over three ones. Okay. So I gave you another blank one of these so you can practice filling it in. And on it's under posted under document sharing. Okay. So so today we're working with these radian measures. And so I just wanted to sort of make a video filming out or film it, make a video of me filling out this unit circle with y'all. Any questions? No one wants to say anything? And be watched in Japan. I have a good number of people watching these videos in Japan, so anyone know any Japanese? It'd be so cool to say something in Japanese. No? Okay. Then I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna start doing problems on the board now.